Let's just go ahead and pray for protection, okay? Father, we just come before your holy throne. We ask that you forgive us of our sins we have committed against you and against your creation. Father, I ask right now, according to your word in Psalm 34, verse 7, that you can your angels around all of us, the angels broadcast, around our loved ones, family members, ministry partners, in-laws, ex-in-laws and friends, to protect us and keep us safe from any form of retaliation or attacks of the devil and his demons. And we declare Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Listen, God is a spirit, isn't he? Let me read from the word of God here, okay? John chapter 4, verse 24. You need to understand this thing because we're going to be fighting in the spiritual realm. You're going to have to start fighting in the spiritual realm and I'm going to teach you how to do it. Okay, now let me read John chapter 4, verse 24. The Bible says, God is your spirit. Okay, and those, listen to this, and those who worship him must worship him in his spirit. And in truth, let me read that again because I wanted to get this. Okay, God is a spirit. Everybody say God is a spirit. Okay, and those who worship Him, okay, must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Right in the spirit and truth. Right. Now, let me touch a little bit on that before I go to the next, you know, scripture here. Okay. If God is a spirit, let me ask a question. God is a spirit, isn't he? Say yes or no in the comment area. Is God a spirit? Yes or no? All right. Now, listen to this. Okay. If God is a spirit, then are you a spirit as well? Yes or no? Are you a spirit? Yes or no? Are you a spirit as well, like God? Yes or no? All right. Okay, I'm going somewhere here, please. Okay, I'm going somewhere. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in his spirit and truth. Now, let me ask a question. I know... You live in a body that is decaying. Your body is decaying. Is that good news or bad news? Your body is decaying. Okay, God created your body to decay because of sin. It started decaying after the sin of Adam and Eve. Now, everybody who's born, their body is going to decay. Right? So, you know that part. Now, when the body, so let me say this, you, your body is decaying, you have a body, I have a body, you can see me right now through my body, but I also have a spirit which you cannot see. You also have a spirit in you that I cannot see, but I can communicate with. Now listen, listen, can you hear me? I'm talking to you using my vocal cords. I'm talking to you using my vocal cords. Okay, vocal cords. That's why you can hear me. Okay. How about if we spirits? Listen, how about if we spirits? Do they have vocal cords? Unless they are inside somebody then they can use those vocal cords like they do it often. But when they are not inside someone, then they don't have vocal cords. Do they have vocal cords being spirits? They don't. So how do they communicate? This is the portion that I want you to get. How do they communicate? They communicate through the mind. Your mind can communicate spiritually. When you think, 
Demas can hear you. When you think God can hear you. Okay. When you think. You are speaking out loud in the spiritual language. Any spirit can hear you. Some people say, can demons read our minds? No, they cannot. Your mind is not a newspaper. They cannot read your mind. They can hear when your mind speaks. Now, does your mind speak out loud on its own? No. When your vo when your your mouth speaks, your mouth is speaking from your mind. Your mind is sending signals to your vocal cords to speak audibly. So you need to understand the best way to fight demons is not verbally. No, it's not. The best way to cast out demons is not verbally. Why? Because verbally, you get tired. Verbally, other people can hear you. Okay, right? Verbally, anybody around you can hear you because you're speaking verbally. Let me tell you something. Okay, I'm going somewhere here. <clears throat> okay, there's a better way to fight demons. Okay, and that is not verbally. You may say, Brother Carl, that is not in the Bible. Well, I just read this scripture here. I just read this scripture. And you are saying that is not in the Bible? Do you want me to read it again? I'll be happy to. God is a spirit. God is not a fat body. I have to say body. Because one lady thought I was going to, I was saying some, another word. That is a curse word. No. God does not have a fat body, 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 your body. Okay. This is part of my body. God does not have a body like you do. So when God speaks, he doesn't have vocal cords because he doesn't need one. You need one to talk to me. I need one to talk to you. Okay, but for me to talk to demons, I don't need vocal cords. And by the way, when you use your vocal cords, you get tired faster. Other people can hear you. You may feel embarrassed that you're casting out demons. You're not like me. I feel joyful. I love screaming at devils sometimes out loud. But listen, the same, listen. The same way demons talk to you, you should talk back to them. Brother Carla, how do they talk to me? Through your mind. They speak into your mind and it comes across as thoughts. You may say, wow, I feel an urge to watch pornography. Well, listen, that may not be coming from you. That may be a spirit suggesting that you should do that. And, and the, the spirit is going to speak into your mind. And you're not going to hear any loud words spoke, being spoken to you. You are going to hear that in your mind. It's going to be a thought. And you may say, wow, I'm thinking about that myself. Oh, it may not be. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart. Okay, for out of it. It springs the issues of life. Now, the Bible is saying heart, but that's not heart. That is your mind. In other words, guard your mind. For out of it, it springs the issues of life. Guard your mind. For out of it, it springs the issues of life. Okay. Guard your mind. How, brother Carlos, that I guard my mind? Well... All right, you need to know that most of the thoughts that cross your head are not coming from you. They may not be coming from you. They may be demonic thoughts giving you suggestions to do something evil, to do something bad. That's what people feel most of the day. They receive way more negative thoughts than they receive positive. I already know that. I already who I already know I already know who is who are speaking those negative thoughts into my mind. I already know it. 
And how do I fight back? Be, be, listen, that is one of the best kept secrets in the Bible. How do you fight them back? Through your spirit. I mean, you can yell at them like I do sometimes. You can. Or I, I already heard preachers saying, you don't yell at demons. Jesus never did. How do you know that Jesus didn't yell at them? Because you were not there. Okay, just because, you know, he said to a demon, come out. That doesn't mean he was saying like you, come on, demon, please. Can you come out? Okay. Okay, demon, please. Please, come out. Do you think Jesus was casting out demons like that or, or, or more like my style? Come out, devil. Come out, evil spirits. Go to the pit now. Go to the pit now. In Jesus' mighty name, go now, devil. Do you think Jesus was casting out demons like the guys you see on YouTube now that are uh, coming up with another way of casting out demons? Demon, can you please come out, Jezebel? Come out, Leviathan. Come out, Jezebel, please, please. I don't want to yell at you like Brother Carlos, you know. <laughs> can you just come out? <laughs> Listen. Let me tell you, there's a better way to drive out demons, and that is through your spirit man. I want you to write that in, in the comment area. I have, uh, 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 I have a spirit inside my body. No, no, you can write this. I am a spirit. I am a spirit. Are you a spirit? Maybe some of you never knew that you were a spirit, huh? Yes, you are a spirit. Now, listen, since you are a spirit and you can hear conversations being spoken spiritually, thoughts, can you speak spiritually as well? They say in America, well, you don't pray in church. I mean, I mean, you don't pray. Yeah, pretty soon that's going to be true. You don't pray in church. You just eat pork there, okay, and flirt with one another, right? And then go sleep together, right? Put it soon. Now listen, okay, listen. Uh, well, okay, just a second. Okay, why did I say that? I think I, I lost a little bit here, uh, what I was going to say, okay? Okay, if I remember, I'll say it. You know, I'm sorry, I apologize. I, I, I should have not said that. Okay, so, uh, oh, I, I remember now. Okay, let me say this to you. You know, in America, if you go to a public school, can you pray there? Can you pray in a public school? Do they allow you to pray there? I already know your answer. Can you type in the comment area, yes or no? Do they allow you to pray in a school, in public schools in America? Do they allow you to pray there? To pray to Jesus, right? Do they allow you to pray or not? Okay, let me say something to, to you. You know, I have grandchildren that attend schools. You know, you know, two of them attend public schools. I was very fortunate that my sons attended private schools, but my granddaughters are attending public schools. I go to their schools sometimes when I am with them. I go. Now, do I pray there? Oh, you bet. You bet. The moment that I cross the gate, I'm already casting out devils. I'm already honoring God. I'm already praying to Jesus. How come they don't kick me out? Well, because I am praying in the spiritual language. Can God hear when your brain, when your mind speaks? Can God hear? When you send a thought to God, can God hear that? Loud and clear. God is a spirit. John 4, 24. God is a spirit. And those. Now, this is what they don't preach, preach in church. And those who worship him must. Jesus said this. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in his spirit. Wow. That's revelation, isn't it? 
Jesus said, God is spirit. And those, including you, and those who worship him must worship him through the inner man. Through the, through the spiritual language. Spiritually. Okay. Now, let me explain that a little bit because you are living inside your body. Let me say that to you. To, to worship God in his spirit doesn't mean you have to be saying words to him verbally. If you are speaking words verbally to God, you may not be worshiping him in his spirit. You may not be. You may not be. You may be worshiping him, you know, in the body, through the body, in the flesh. But when Jesus said, those who worship him must worship him in his spirit and truth. Now, listen, your spirit and your mind are one. Your spirit and your mind are one. You can never separate your spirit from your mind. Your mind is your spirit. Your spirit is your mind. Start worshiping God in his spirit. You don't have to open your mouth and speak verbally, although there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You can still do it. But, you know, Jesus said, those who worship him must worship him in his spirit. Then worship him in his spirit. How? Mentally. Now I want to train you to do that. I want you to say mentally what I'm going to say here verbally. I want you to say mentally what you're going to hear from me verbally. I want you to say mentally only. Don't open your mouth. Say, Father God, I praise you. Only mentally. Father God, I honor you. Say that mentally, not verbally. Repeat after me mentally. Father God, I honor you. I praise you. I worship you. Don't open your mouth. Keep your mouth shut. Say this to God right now. Father God, I honor you. I only mentally, I honor you. I praise you and I glorify you. Well, that is worshiping God in his spirit. Okay. You don't have to use your vocal cords in his spirit. Okay. You can worship God all day long, every day, while you're driving, while you're eating. Okay. While you're walking around the block, while you're grocery shopping, you can be praising God in your mind. You can be praising God in, instead of saying, Father, I worship you verbally so everybody can hear you and kick you out of there. Just say it mentally. So when I go to schools, I praise God the whole time I'm there. Okay, just to break the law. Just to break the law, I praise God. I honor him. I pray to him. Okay, why I am in a school. They say I cannot do it. I said, I say, yes, I can. And I'm already doing it. And if I get to, ha if I happen to go to the principal's office, I'm going to honor God right there in front of him. And he will not say a word. Okay. That's me. I learned to honor God spiritually. I learned to, 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 you know, worship God spiritually, mentally. When I say spiritually, I'm saying mentally. You don't have to use your vocal cords. Now, how about driving out demons? How about driving out? I'm going to have to save the other scriptures for another broadcast. Because I'm planning to do this one only for half an, for like an hour. Okay. I mean, if we have time, I can still read another one. I might still read another one. Listen. 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 Are demons spirits? Can you see them when they're flying around? Although sometimes they materialize. Yeah. But for the most part, they're they are invisible. 
Can you hear them talking to you out loud? Although that can happen sometimes, it's an extraordinary thing. But for the most part, they're speaking to you right through your mind. They are bombarding your mind with negative thoughts. They speak into your mind and it comes across as thoughts. So how do you know those are demons? Well, you don't need to know. Just cast it out. When in doubt, cast it out. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to cast out demons mentally. When in doubt, cast it out. Now, I want you to cast out a demon from you. I don't know if the demon is in you or not, but you know, for, just for the sake of it, you know, let's just, just do it. Most people have demons in them. Most people. Okay? Most people have demons in them. Just for the sake of what we are doing here. Let's say you have a demon in you. Now, I want you to cast out a demon. I want you to hear what I'm going to say verbally. And I want you to do it mentally. But I want you to start doing this from now on. Okay? Cast out demons more mentally than verbally. It's going to be better. You won't get tired as much. And you can do it as you are driving. You can do it as you are grocery shopping like I do. I go to a bank. I'm standing in line. And guess what? Demon, get out of here. I'm speaking to my mind. Uh, through my mind. Demon, get out. Nobody hears me. Oh, but the demons do. Now, can a demon hear when you speak to him mentally? Let me say this to you. Okay. I have driven out demons. Okay. Across the globe. Okay. Mentally. And they left. Okay. I've done that a couple of times. Okay. To people that were possessed. I did that. Okay. From one part of the globe to another part of the globe without being on the phone, without being on the internet. I just did it. Somebody asked me to do it. I said, okay, let me do it. Then I said, mentally, demon, get out of that boy. Get out now. Three weeks later, the mother contacted me. Brother Carlos, the day you said you're going to do it, the demon left my son. He's healed. Listen. I'm speaking revelation here, okay? The guys from the Jezebel and Leviathan club, they don't talk about these things, do they? No, they don't. They should. But they are too busy casting out Jezebel and Leviathan, huh? creating confusion, right? Listen, I'm going to tell you how to cast out a demon here right now. Listen, let me say this to you. There's no distance in the spiritual realm. I want you to say, okay, <clears throat> I want you to, you know, pay attention to what I'm saying. There's no distance in the spiritual realm like we have here. Let me give you an example. If I want to travel from Atlanta to New York physically, I'm going to have to either drive, which is going to take about six hours, six to eight hours, nine hours, I guess. Or I can fly, which is going to take about an hour, but I'm going to have to drive from my home in Marietta, uh, uh, Georgia, right? I'm going to have to drive all the way to the airport, and from the airport, I'm going to catch an airplane. It's going to take another at least two and a half hours for the whole process, okay? But let me tell you something. If I were to do that to drive out demons from somebody, in person, then I would have to do that. I would have to travel. But if I decided to do it spiritually, I don't have to travel. I don't have to drive. I don't have to catch an airplane. I can speak through my spirit. I can cast that demon out mentally, and that demon is going to hear me loud and clear immediately. No phone involved. No internet involved. Immediately, immediately, I can speak to any demon I want. If they are if they, if they are rising against me, I can get to them in a heartbeat, and I don't have to travel anywhere. All I have to do is utilize the spiritual language and cast that devil out, or arrest him, or handcuff him. 
I do it all the time. Do I have to be walking around? Dima, come out. Dima, come out. And then I go grocery shopping. Dima, come out. I go to the bank. Dima, come out. No. I say it through my spirit, man. I say it through my mind. And the moment I say that demon can be on the other side of the planet, that devil is going to hear me loud and clear, and I'm going to get to him in a heartbeat. All because I am using, okay, the power that God gave me. The power of the spirit that God gave me. I cast out more demons mentally than I cast them out verbally. I don't have to cast them out verbally. And you may say, well, Brother Carlos, you know, we understand that God is a spirit and we must worship him mentally. We must worship him mentally. That's exactly what he said there. Okay, those who worship God must worship him in his spirit. What does that mean? Worship him mentally. Why? Because God is mind. God is a mind. He has a mind. His mind and his spirit are one. You can talk to God anytime you want mentally. Mentally. Why you wait to get home to talk to God when you can talk to God right at the grocery store? Well, brother, God, there are some people around me. I cannot talk to God right now. Why not? Why not? You can talk to God anytime you want. Just talk to him the way he hears immediately through your mind. God is a spirit. God is not a human body. For you to talk to me and, and me to talk to you, we have to get on the phone. We have to meet, you know, somewhere or we have to speak through the Internet. But God does not have a body like you do. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him through their minds. Through their inner path. Man, through the power of their spirit. Worship God spiritually. Learn to worship God spiritually. Everywhere you go, you can worship him everywhere you go. You can be at the White House and you can praise and worship him there. And nobody is going to say anything. Because he, just a second please. All right. Because of what? Because he is a spirit. He can hear you when you speak mentally. Now, demons speak to you mentally as well. Keep in mind, some of the thoughts that you are receiving are not yours. They are being sent to you. Demons are speaking outside. They might be on the outside, but they are speaking to you. But they speak to their minds. They speak to your mind. Now, your mind can hear their, their words. But it's going to come across as thoughts. Tell the Leviathan and Jezebelian guys to preach about these things too. Tell them to educate people, you know, the way that people have to understand. You need to understand this. Okay. Now, I'm going to teach you how to cast out demons here mentally. I don't want you to open your mouth. I don't want you to say not even one word verbally. Are you ready? Now, repeat after me, just mentally. If we spirit, I command you to come out of me now. In Jesus' name. Speak that mentally. Don't say a word. Keep your mouth shut. Repeat after me, mentally. If we spirit, get out of my body right now. Cancer, get out of my body now. Say it mentally. Pain, get out of my body. Come out. 
in Jesus name. I hope you are saying that mentally because that's how I want you to do it. You can still cast them out verbally, no problem with that. Okay? But you don't have to do it that way. You don't have to do it. Okay? Now you may say, Brother Carlos, but Jesus did it verbally. Yes, he did it verbally. Why? Because there were always a bunch of ignorant people around him. And he wanted them to learn. That's why he spoke verbally. Did Jesus have, did Jesus have to cast out a demon verbally in order for the demon to go? No. He actually did a couple of miracles far away without casting the demon out verbally. You may say, Brother Carlo, where is that in the Bible? Oh, I'll be happy to let you know. Okay. Chapter 7 of the book of Mark. The Syrophoenician woman. She had a demon-possessed daughter in her home. She heard that Jesus was in the vicinity. So then she decided to look for Jesus. And then she was looking for Jesus in the vicinity. Then she found him. But he was resting. He didn't want anybody to bother him. But and then the lady kept begging and kept pressing in. And she kept pressing in. Finally, Jesus came out. He said to the lady... What can I do for you? She said, Lord, my daughter is possessed by a demon. Now, this is a Syrophoenician woman, okay, that did not, know, did not know God, okay? She was pretty much a pagan. And she already understood about autism demons, okay? Mental demons. Because she told Jesus, my daughter is possessed by a demon. And then Jesus, what did Jesus say? He said, listen, he said, well, it's not fair for me to throw the bread of the children to the little dogs. And then the lady said, Lord, but the little dogs under the table eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table. Jesus said, Jesus was not with the girl. Jesus said, because of what you just said, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. Well, Jesus didn't cast him out verbally. The woman did not cast out the demon verbally. The demon wasn't right there. The demon was, you know, a few blocks away. But he left. No one cast out demon, the demon verbally, out loud. No one did. Jesus didn't do it. The woman didn't do it. She didn't, she didn't know what to do anyways. Well, but the demon left. Could have Jesus? Could have Jesus cast out that demon mentally? Why not, folks? While the woman was still talking, Jesus said, okay, demon, go. Mentally. Why? Because Jesus was a spirit in the flesh. But he, okay, he could communicate with any spirit without utilizing vocal cords. Okay. There was another situation where a servant of, the, uh, of a centurion got healed. He got healed far away. Okay, same thing. Jesus said, let's go to your house. The centurion said... Lord, is not, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. In other words, I'm a sinner. I'm a bad one. I'm not worthy of you having you under my roof. Okay, just say a word. Then the guy said, the centurion said, just say a word. Okay. And my servant will be healed. Jesus didn't say, okay, servant, I heal you. He didn't say that. He didn't say, he said, you may go, you may go. Your servant is already healed. You may go. Well, Jesus didn't heal him verbally. Nobody heard it. He didn't cast out any demon verbally. Nobody heard it. All he said to the centurion is, you may go now. Your servant is healed.
Jesus could communicate mentally while he was working on the walking on this planet. He could communicate mentally with anybody, anyone at any given time. Now, one more thing I want to say here. Okay. When Jesus was being tempted in the, in the desert, when Jesus was being tempted in the desert, Satan was there. Satan showed up. Well, Satan didn't show up in a physical body. No. He simply showed up. He was a spirit being, and he showed up that way. And he decided to come and talk to Jesus. Hey, Jesus. You know, if you do this, then that will happen. Then the Bible says that Jesus replied to him. Okay, right? Quoting scriptures from the word of God, right? And that's how he overcame Satan. But listen, did Jesus speak verbally? You may say yes. Yeah, you may be right. He probably did. Or he probably did not. He probably did not. Why? Because Satan was there in his spirit, Jesus didn't have to talk to Satan verbally because Jesus was the one who created Satan to begin with. And he created Satan a spirit. Why the creator of the universe would have to talk to his creation verbally when he can communicate with him spiritually? But you know, it's written in the Bible that Jesus said this. Well, but the Bible doesn't say he said it verbally. The Bible didn't say he said it spiritually. But the Bible said that he said it. Well, whoever wrote that story wrote it because Jesus told them to write. Right? Whether Luke, or, or I mean, not Luke, but uh, Matthew. Yeah, okay, Matthew, write this, okay? The Satan came to me and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right? So, folks, what I'm saying to you is this, okay? I'm going to leave the other scriptures for another time. We're going to come and broadcast again here in about, uh, let's say, in a couple of days. I'll let you know. Okay, listen. Did you learn today to worship God in your spirit? You can still use your vocal cords. Don't get me wrong, but you don't have to. When you are worshiping God, worship Him mentally. Because that is how he communicates with you anyways. He can hear every word your mind is speaking. But you can still use your vocal cords. No, Don't get me wrong. You don't have to, but you can do it. When you cast out demons, you can do it verbally, but that's going to get you tired and exhausted pretty soon. But if you do it mentally, I guarantee you, you won't get tired. I do it all day long, every day. I don't get tired at all. But if I do it verbally for about half an hour, pretty soon, I feel a little bit exhausted. I do. So why use my flesh when demons don't have flesh? Even if they are possessing somebody, I can still address them mentally. Because they can hear every word that I'm speaking. Okay. So, this is what I want you to know, folks, that this is not taught in church. This is not taught at the Jezebelian and Leviathanian, you know, broadcasts. They don't talk about this there. And if they do, they don't go deep. You need to know these things. This will give you an advantage over the kingdom of Satan. Why? Because now you can cast out more demons than you could prior. Because now you're going to do it mentally as well. Remember, you can use your vocal cords. Don't get me wrong. But you don't have to. Okay? Say it mentally right now. Evil spirit, get out of my life right now in Jesus' name. Say that mentally. They hear you. They hear you loud and clear. I talk to them all the time in this fashion. That's why they don't come around me. They don't like coming around me. They don't. Demons don't like coming around me. They don't. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Because I'm constantly knocking them down and knocking them out. And I do it in the power 
of the name of Jesus con in conjunction with my spirit. I'm utilizing my spiritual language. Some people think that spiritual language is speaking in tongues. No, it's not. Speaking in tongues is not spiritual language. Okay? Spiritual language is when you speak through your spirit, not through your vocal cords. That's spiritual language. Okay? It's good if you know how to speak in tongues. Go ahead and keep on doing it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? Say amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace.